as it still includes the design of circular base plates based on the AISC 360 and ACI 318 for the Anchorage design. But how do you actually design a real-life circular base plate? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to design completely from scratch a circular base plate example including the anchor rods per the ACI 318. Let's get started. As an example, consider this circular base plate, which is supporting a 16-inch pipe column, and the structure is resting on a circular concrete support as well. It's subject to the following loads, dead axial load 200 kips, and then wind moment 140 kip feet, and shear 10 kip. With this information, we are required to design the base plate, the size and the thickness, also design the anchor rods according to the ACI 318 and verify all the code provisions. To do this design, we will open ASDIP Steel. Let's go there. When you open ASDIP Steel, this is the project manager where you can see the modules included in the package, base plates and anchorage, steel columns, steel on composite beams, shear connections, moment connections, and web openings. In this case, we're going to create a calculation for a base plate. Let's click on this button. Let's assign a name. Let's say example. Click add. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on this node on the tree. And this is the template for a base plate design in ASDIP Steel. Since our example is a circular base plate, we select the plate type circular. Here in the geometry tab, we enter the information that we know from the statement of the problem. We know that the column diameter is 16 inches, so we leave it the way it is. The base plate diameter, here we can change whatever we want, but let's say that is 22 inches because we're going to leave space for the anchor rods. The support diameter, for now let's leave it the way it is, 26 inches, which is 2 inches uh, larger than uh, the base plate. And the anchor rod edge distance is one and a half inches. Let's go to the materials tab. Here we enter the material properties for the concrete support. Let's say that the F prime C is four KSI and the reverse 60 KSI. For the base plate, let's say that the plate is grade 50, 50 KSI. And here in the strain compatibility, if we mark this checkbox, that means that we are forcing the plate to remain elastic. That means that the plane section before bending will remain plane after bending. So let's check this box. At the bottom of the page, uh, the number of anchor rods, let's say that is 12 anchor rods for now, one inch diameter, F1554, grade 36. Graphically, if we click on the graph tab, we can see what we are doing. This is the plate that we just modeled, 22 inches diameter. And then the ball circle is 19 inches. Let's click now on the loads tab to enter the loads given in the statement of the problem. We're gonna specify a set of nominal loads and then we'll combine these loads per the asset setting load combinations. We will use LRFD. And now we know the actual load depth is 200 kips was given in the statement of the problem and also we have some wind loads we have that the moment is 140 kip feet and then the shear is 10 kips so now we have entered all the information that we know if we go to the anchorage design in the tension analysis the support thickness is more than 18 let's say that is 36 inches and the embedment depth, let's say that is 18 inches in this case. Please note that we are specifying here some anchor reinforcement. Let's see what happens if we don't provide this reinforcement. Just uncheck this box. And then we can see here that the concrete breakout is controlling the design. And the ratio is 2.35. So it's necessary to provide some rebars to transfer the tension rather than in a breakout action. So let's go back to the reinforcement provided. Yes. Let's see if we can optimize this anchor reinforcement. We know that the reverse strength ratio is 0.30. So there's room for improvement here. Instead of two number fives, let's say one number five per rod. And now the ratio is 0.59. 
which is still less than the controlling one, side phase blowout, 0.83. So this is an improvement in the design of the anchorage. Let's go to the shear analysis tab. Here we are resisting the shear with the anchor rods only. The washers are not welded to the base plate, which means that only the uh, front anchor rods are affected. We go to the graph tab, to the shear breakout. Here we can see that only the three front rods are effective to resist shear. Let's go to the base plate tab. Here we can see the maximum tension per rod, 8.1 kip, and the maximum bearing stress, 2.5 KSI. If we go to the tension breakout tab, we can see here the calculation of the tension breakout area, which is the, this shaded area as 404 square inches. If we go to the Ara Glance tab, we can see a summary of the results. We can see exactly where we are. For example, the bearing stresses, is uh, the ratio is 0.96, it's passing. The base plate uh, thickness is failing here. We can increase it. In the anchorage design, we have an issue here. Uh, the tension design ratio is 1.03, 3% over. The shear is okay, 0.40 but the combined tension shear interaction is 1.15. So we are 15% over. Let's go to the condensed tab to see a more detailed set of calculation about this. Scroll down about the anchorage design. We can see here that the controlling failure mode for tension is side phase blowout is 1.03. Also in shear, the controlling failure mode is concrete pry out. These failure modes have to do with the concrete support. Let's go back to geometry. Instead of 26 inches diameter of the concrete support, let's say that we increase it to 28, two more inches. And now the side phase blowout design ratio has been reduced to 0.83, and the shear uh, concrete pry out has been reduced to 0.33. So the combined tension shear interaction is 0.94. So now it's passing. Let's go back to the other glance tab. Now everything is passing except the plate thickness. The required plate thickness is 1.77 inches. So we can go here to the geometry tab, base plate thickness, instead of one inch, we can say that it's two inches. Also probably one and three quarters, 1.75 inches would do it because it's very close. But let's say that is two inches to be safe. And now the thickness is passing, all the anchorage is passing, and the bearing stresses are passing as well. We go to the condensed tab. In the base plate design, this is the maximum moment due to bearing, the maximum moment due to tension in the rods, and the plate thickness required is 1.77 inches. We are providing two inches, so the thickness is okay. In the anchorage design area, the tension analysis, the maximum ratio is 0.83. The controlling failure mode is side phase blowout. In the shear analysis area, the maximum design ratio is 0.33. The controlling failure mode is concrete pray out. The tension shear interaction is 0.94. So the anchorage design is, is complete and is passing. As you can see, it's very easy to design circular base plates and anchorage using ASDIP steel. Once you finish your model and enter all the information given in the statement of the problem, you can start optimizing the design. And ASDIP steel is a great tool to do it. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.